I want to finish by speaking of some of the common reasons that many of us Christians, myself included, are tempted to feel disqualified from the work of evangelization, or why they might feel that it's not important or necessary. I think there are many reasons for why people feel these ways, and I'll examine six of the most common, which are inadvertence, quasi-universalism, not gifted enough, don't know enough, not holy enough, and fear. First, I think that many Christians don't feel the necessity of evangelization because they simply haven't heard of the universal call to evangelization, or they haven't given it much thought. They haven't really meditated on this aspect of loving God and loving our neighbor. They haven't connected the dots, and generally, I don't think it's entirely their fault. Most Christians today, unfortunately, are simply not taught about the universal call to evangelization. They aren't taught about it, so they don't think about it. And it isn't internalized, reflected upon, and then acted upon. The good news is that this is changing. It's getting better, at least. We're hearing more today about the call to evangelization than we have in a long time, and that's good news. A second reason that leads many Christians to feel like evangelization is not necessary is quasi-universalism. There is a quasi-universalist mentality that has snuck into the church. This is often a vague sense that nearly everybody makes it to heaven. Like Uncle Joe, yeah, he hated God and he abused his wife and his kids, but he was still a good man deep down, and he's definitely in a better place. You hear people saying things like this all the time. Now, obviously there's hope for Uncle Joe. There's hope for everybody. But we simply do not know who will be saved and who won't. Maybe the large majority of humanity will be saved, and maybe only a minority. We don't know. What we do know is that Jesus gives us a clear warning. He says, strive to enter through the narrow gate, which few will find. Gaining heaven is difficult, and each and every soul is in danger of losing God forever. Therefore, we have an obligation to help them to avoid that danger. Third, some people feel that because evangelization is not their charism, or because they are introverts, they are really not called to evangelize. As we know, it's true that all Christians have different God-given charisms, which are spiritual gifts that the Lord gives to each one of us for the building up of the church. Some people have the charism of hospitality. Others are gifted in the area of leadership or administration. And still others have various other charisms, such as teaching or healing or intercessory prayer, and so on. And then there is the gift of evangelization. Now, just because a person does not have a specific charism doesn't mean that they are exempt from performing that activity in a more natural way. For example, I don't have the charism of hospitality. You can just ask my wife. But I still need to strive to be hospitable. Another person might not have the charism of healing, but this doesn't mean that they should never pray for people to be healed, and so on. And just because a person doesn't have the charism of evangelization doesn't mean that they shouldn't evangelize. On the contrary, all Christians, all of us, are called to evangelization, even if we're not supernaturally gifted in this area. And evangelization isn't just for extroverts. You probably know that introverts tend to be better at silent prayer and meditation than extroverts are. But extroverts still need silence and meditation. And likewise, extroverts might find evangelization more natural than some introverts do. But both still need to evangelize. Some of the best evangelists that I know are extremely introverted but God still uses them powerfully. So even those without the charism of evangelization 
or those who are introverted are still called to evangelize. We all are. A fourth common reason people give for not evangelizing is that they don't know the Bible well enough or the catechism well enough to evangelize effectively. Or they might think that they just don't know what to say. Well, none of us know the Bible well enough, right? I certainly don't. And I certainly don't know the answer to every question that I might get asked while I share my faith with somebody. But I know that God still wants to use me anyway. It's true that it's good to know the Bible and the Catechism and to try to be as prepared as we can to answer questions that we might get asked. We should all be continuously striving to learn the scriptures and grow in our faith. But if a person is a practicing disciple of Jesus Christ and loves the Lord, then they are equipped to evangelize by those facts alone. Sure, we'll make mistakes. We'll say the wrong thing from time to time. But that's okay. God still wants to use us. A fifth reason that keeps us from evangelizing is that many of us think that we're not good enough or holy enough to evangelize effectively. We need to remember that it's not by our own power or by our own holiness that we become equipped to evangelize. We're called and equipped to be missionaries by our very baptism and by the mere fact that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. If we wait until we're perfect before we start doing something, whatever that thing is, then we'll never get anything done. And sharing the faith is no different. We strive for holiness by God's grace and we evangelize, even though we haven't been perfected yet. And finally, our sixth reason is fear. Some of us are just scared. Scared that we might push people away instead of drawing them close. Scared that we'll be too preachy. We're scared of failure or scared of what people might think of us. We're scared that we might lose friends or family or even our jobs. Let me tell you, if you're scared, you're not alone. It's true, evangelization can be scary, but we need to push through because it's so important. I'm sure that firefighters are scared when they rush into a burning building to save people, but they need to overcome those fears and push through anyway. And we need to push through as well. But we don't just push through by our own strength or our own power. We have the grace of God and the Holy Spirit. Even the apostles were scared before Pentecost. And we know that even after Pentecost, they continued to pray for more zeal and for more boldness. And after they prayed for more zeal and boldness, the building shook and they were all filled again with the Holy Spirit. So it's okay to be afraid, it's natural. But with God's help, we can overcome this fear. You know, I think all of us struggle with these obstacles to differing degrees. So we have to help one another not to be discouraged. Trust me when I tell you that after many years of personal evangelization, I still have to overcome and push through these feelings of inadequacy and fight back against all sorts of temptations to abandon or at least slack off on my God-given call to evangelize. It's a constant battle, but it must be fought. And with God's strength, we can succeed as long as we do our part. And that includes our great calling to holiness and our calling to evangelize. In Christ and with his help, we will love God and we will love neighbor and teach others to do the same. And only then will we transform the world according to the kingdom of God. God bless you.